Okay, everybody, this is Mr. Yale, and I'm going to go through two of the word problems that I was making uh, you look at today. I want to look at these carefully simply because I want to make sure that you understand how to, uh, how to do them, but also why they're so important and making sure you're ready for the test that's coming up very soon. Okay, so the first one, uh, the main issue with this one is, can you make this question into a set of equations? So one number plus four more than five times another adds to 67. Three times the first number plus eight less the square of the second adds to 167. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful. So what I always think you should do is separate the sentence into the things that you know. So I know that I'm starting off with one number. Okay, so I'm going to just make a little bracket around that. One number. Plus, um, well, I'm going to take one number. I'm going to plus something else. So I know that plus means plus. Yeah, that wasn't tough. Four more than five times another. Now, four more than five times another. The then means this is all one thing. It's not four more. It's four more than something else. So this whole thing here is one thing. I don't know what it is yet, but it's something. And then it says, adds to 67. Now, 67, I, I can just do that. There we go. But what does it mean, adds to? Well, I was adding these two. Uh, one number plus this number, adds to. So the adds to is actually um, telling me that this is what it comes to. This is, it adds to. It, it equals 67. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so I'm going to have, and I'm going to put, now this is very important. I'm going to put um, everything into brackets. I, I think that really helps. So I'm going to have uh, this thing plus uh, the other thing, and it's going to equal 67. So the question is, is what are those things? Now, one number. Okay, well, I don't know what that number is. I guess uh, I have to call it something. Most of you probably called it X. Um, sure, let's call it X. I'll do it also. Then it's four more than five times another. Now, I've been trying to figure out how to do this where uh, it becomes obvious how to write it. And I've noticed that with Chinese students, it is better that you start from the end and you go backwards. So another, what is another? Well, that's, uh, it's another number. Um, I'm going to have to call it something else. Okay, so that's Y. But it's five times another. Okay, well, that's five. Why? Five times another. Four more then. Okay, so four more. How do I get four more? Well, I'm going to add four. I'm going to get four more. So notice how I started from the end and I went backwards. Okay, so then now i got to do the next one. Let me see the next line. Three times the first number. All right, there's that. Three times the first number. I'm going to put that down there. I'm going to have this is my next thing. Three times first number. Plus, ah, yeah, there's another plus. Okay. Eight less the square of the second. All right, whatever that is, I don't know yet. Adds to, oh, I know what that means. And that's 167. Okay, so adds to 167. So let's go back. Let's take a look. Three times the first number. What was my first number? Um, that was X. Okay, so this is three times the first number. There we go. Three times the first number. Now, this is the one that a lot of people had trouble with. Eight less the square of the second. Okay, so once again, let's go backwards. Okay, square of the second. What is square of the second? Well, squaring... Now, what is my second number? Oh, it was Y. Right. Y was my second number. Now, some of you did 5Y was your second number. It's not 5y. It's just y. Now you did five times y here, but the second number is just y. So the square would be y squared. y squared. And it's eight less. Okay, that means I'm going less eight. So minus eight. Okay. So here I go. I got this is this is my equation. So what so what do I what do I do now? Uh, best thing to do would probably change one of these. I'm going to change the top one. 
and I'm going to use it so that I can uh, I can substitute. So what will I get? Well, in this case, x. Let me see. I'll keep the x and I'll move everything else over. So that'd be x equals uh, minus 5y, and then so that's 67 minus 4. That'll be uh, plus 63. All right. Okay. Then I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this whole thing here. And I'm going to substitute. I'm going to substitute right into that x. So what does that give me? Let me see. Now, first, all the brackets come down. I'm going to have 3 times what? Well, x is now, what is it? Put it in brackets. Minus 5y plus 63. And then I'm adding y squared. Minus 8. And that equals 167. Okay, now I'm gonna mess around with this. Let me see. I'm gonna I got I got, a, I got a y squared. Uh, let me see. Negative 15 y. Is there anything else? Nope. Negative 15 y. And now I got three times 63 minus eight. And then I'm gonna bring the 167. That's gonna be minus 167. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna go through all that with you, but you get plus 14. Ooh. And that equals zero. Now, why did I want to make it equal zero? Well, if you look at this, I've got a quadratic. I've got a quadratic equal to zero, which means I am looking for roots. I'm looking for roots. Well, that's pretty easy. So what should I do? Well, let's look at this. I can factor this probably pretty easily. Let me see. Uh, what added together gives me negative 15, but multiplied together gives me positive 14. Hmm, not too hard to do. I'm going to go with y minus 14 times y minus 1 gives me minus 15, and multiplied gives me positive 14. So what does that tell me? It means um, y1 is equal to 14, and y2 is equal to 1. Now, remember, I am not finished. What I've got, I should emphasize this, I am not finished because you are looking for two numbers. The two numbers aren't 14 and 1. These are two different second numbers, the y's. I need each of these y's has an x that goes with it. i got to plug it in. So uh, let me see. So then let's go up here. Uh, if y equals, for example, y equals 1, what do I go? Well, i got to pick one of my equations. Um, I'll pick the first one at the top there. It's probably the easier one. x plus 5 times, now y is 1, plus 4 equals 67. So that'll be 5 plus 4. I'm going to get x equal to 58, because it's going to be 67 minus 9. Okay, so... That's that one. And if y equals 14, what do I got? x plus 5 times 14 plus 4 equals 67. And I get, what, what, what do I get there? x will be equal to minus 7, actually. Okay, so then at the very end of it, I have to write my answers. Remember, I'm writing them as uh, two numbers that go together. So x is 58, I got 58, and then I've got 1. But the other answer is if x is negative 7 and my y is 14. These are the two different sets of two numbers that I can get. This is my answer here. So, hooray! Hooray! That's that one. Okay, now we're going to look... Uh, at the second question. Let's just take this away and take a look here. Now, this one, I, I'm not actually going to answer the whole question because I, what I want to do, though, is I want you to look at this and I want to show you how graphing can really make you understand what's going on because a lot of you try to do this entirely by math and you're getting horribly, horribly wrong answers. So let me see. What do I got? I got h equals negative 4.9t squared plus 900. 
And this is, let me see, what is this? Um, the height of the crate during free fall. So a crate is dropped from a plane. So I, I got this little, I got some sort of little plane. Let me see, let me draw the plane here. Here's my plane. It's a horrible plane. And I'm dropping a crate. Here's my, or a box. I guess I said a box in the thing. But then at a certain point, at a certain point, it has a little parachute. There's my parachute. Mm -hmm. Whee! And it kind of drifts farther down. But it's going a lot slower. So at first it's going really, really, really fast, and then it's kind of like drifting blah, nice and slow. So at a certain point, the parachute, that's this thing right here, this parachute here, opens up and the box floats down. And when it's floating down, it's moving in a different path. H equals negative 4T plus 500. One of these is a quadratic. One of these is a linear function. Now, let's put the two of them on a graph and see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to just very quickly draw this here. Let's see if I can draw this good. That's pretty good. Now, notice what I'm doing. Notice what I'm doing. I am not drawing all four coordinates. Sorry, not coordinates. Quadrants. I am not drawing all four. Why? Well, take a look at the equations. This is height. Let me ask you, can I get a negative height? Well, I'm assuming that um, a height of zero is actually the ground, is when I hit the ground. I haven't said it, but this kind of makes sense, right? So zero is equal to the ground. Can I go below? Can I go into the ground? No, let's assume that if I go down here, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna keep going. So there's no negative h. Now let's think about this. What is this? Well, these are all functions of time. So I also don't really have negative time. I, I'm not gonna worry about it. Everything starts at time of zero. So this is zero here. And I'm not going to have anything going on back here. I'm just going to simply start at zero and then move on forward in time. Now, I'm going to draw both of these. Let me see what this looks like. Okay, so the first one is negative 4.9 t squared plus 900. Now, um, let me see here. Can I write this in the vertex format? Well, actually, what's interesting is that this is already in the vertex form. Because if you think about it, this is the same as saying t minus 0 squared. It's the same thing. So in this case, I've actually already written it in the vertex form. So I know that this has a vertex right on the x-axis at, at 900. 0, 900. So this is 0, 900. This is the vertex. So I have a negative a negative a, so I know this thing's going to look like something like this. Whee! Going to go down and go splat. Now, where is this right here? Where is this? Well, that's that's the roots. That's the roots. So uh, let's find the roots. Um, let me see. Uh, negative 4.9 t squared plus 900. What are the roots? It's when my height is equal to zero. So let me see, I move the 900 over and I divide by negative 4.9. So I'm going to have t squared is equal to negative 900 over negative 4.9. Uh, the negatives cancel out and I'm going to get t is equal to plus or minus the root of 900 over 4.9. And that is going to be equal to roughly 13.8. Uh, uh, now, is this in seconds? I don't know if it is. I'm going to assume it's in seconds. Let's say it's seconds. So, T in seconds. H in... Do I know? I don't know. Let's say that this is uh, meters. Okay. So, 13.8. Now, it's plus or minus. I should say it's plus or minus, but notice I don't really care about the rest of my graph that goes down here like this. I, I'm not drawing that. I'm only interested in the positive value, which means this right here, oh, hang on, this right here is at 13.8 positive comma zero. So 
There's the root. There's the root I'm looking for. Uh, that's cute and everything. Let's look at the other one. Negative 4t plus 500. Well, this is a lot easier to draw. This is actually pretty easy because it's a line. So the 500 is going to be my y-intercept. Okay, so that's right here at 500. Um, I guess if I want to be specific, 0, 500 right there. And it's a straight line. Now, um, I know I got a slope of negative 4, so I'm going to negative 4 over, 1 over, 1 over. But this is 500 up. So it would be easier if I just simply knew where it hit the x-axis. So I can do that same way I do the other one. I'm just simply saying, what is the equation? What time will give me? Sorry, I should probably draw a little line between these here. That makes it easier. When height is zero again I, I it's the same thing just like i'm looking for roots except it isn't really a it's not really a root it's just uh an intersection with the x axis so what do i got that means my time is going to be equal to negative 500 and i'm going to divide by negative four okay what do i get well i get out of that i get a positive positive 125 wow okay so this is 13 that's actually going to it's going to be like way over here. Um, I'm going to cheat a little. I'm going to put it here. This is probably not quite accurate, but let's just say right here is 125 comma zero. Okay. So uh, this path hits at one point. So let me draw. Uh, let me see. Can I can I draw this? Let me see. Uh, let me see if I can. Ooh, there we go. Beautiful. There's my straight line. So now. Let's think about what's happening. Now that you've drawn the graph, how long does the crate free fall? Now, what do I mean by how long? Well, by how long, I mean how much time does it take? Well, the question you want to ask yourself is, when does the parachute open? Well, let's think about it. Let's just look at this for a moment. It is, it gets dropped from here it starts it starts here then it's falling here it is it's falling but wait a minute ah here we go that looks exactly what i'm looking for there parachute parachute opens and then falls down slowly so really let me see I, I should pick a, a new color here I'll pick a new color for this is that really the path that it does is it's gonna go down there but then it's gonna go down like this so at what height is this the question is is where is this well, if you think about it, I've got two equations. I want to know it's when negative uh, 4.9t squared plus 900, which is my curve, when it equals negative 4t plus 500. When they equal each other, that's going to be right there where they intersect. Remember, that's what you do when you're graphing. Remember, why you're solving these things by graphing is that you're beginning to realize that you're looking at when two equations equal each other. It's an easy way to solve the problem. So if I want to know at what height does the parachute open, well, that's, that's here, whatever this is right here. When does it, um, how long does the crate free fall? Well, it's from zero, it's from here to when the parachute opens. So whatever this is, this time, and this is the height. So how long does the crate free fall? Um, up to T1. We'll call this right here. This would be T1. What height does it open? H1, I guess. I'll call it H1 right there. So if you look at the graph, you can totally understand what's happening. So I always recommend that when you do these things, I know often uh, you just want to do it entirely in math, but you can see that just by looking at it, you can understand what's happening much, much better. So keep that in mind uh, when you're studying for this and when you're getting ready for the test. Okay, hope that helps.
See ya.